Hi everyone, this is John McNaughton. Welcome to my studio. This is the Patriot Art Show, and I'm your host. And I uh, got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. Uh, it's been a crazy week and a crazy day. Uh, I want to introduce you to my good friend, Seth Adam Smith. He's a producer, helps me make this happen. Howdy. And we try to do this show, like what, every Wednesday evening? But we're doing it a little later tonight, right? Doing it a little later, going on the prime time here. Prime time. So, you know, my big question today is what the heck is going on with the Democrat Party? It's it's crazy. It's not the same party it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I mean, they're insane. You know, and so I was thinking about uh, today drawing a sketch of JFK, you know, John F. Kennedy. And you wonder, you know, how would Kennedy, would he even recognize the Democrat Party if he stepped into the room today and could see what they're doing? You know, he would be more like a, a mainstream Republican today than he would be uh, a Democrat. What do you think, Seth? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's in some ways, but uh, obviously his, his moral life wasn't quite together there. <laughs> Well, that's true, but that's a whole other other. <laughs> you know, it's another conversation entirely. Yeah, I'm I'm not judging nobody on those kind of things. I when it comes to presidents, I look at what they do, you know, and you know somebody like Trump, you know, people say, yeah, but he's not a moral man, or he didn't do this, and you know, I'm not going to judge that guy. You know, there's I'm going to look at what he's done as president, you know, and then. It's interesting because I am I am a Christian and I believe in repentance. And so I, I leave judgment to God. And if people turn their hearts to God, he can make great things happen. So that's my opinion on all that. However, I think JFK, um, he was a pretty good president in some ways. You know, he uh, stood against the establishment and uh, uh, he, he, uh, he was there's a lot of conspiracy theories regarding his death, but. You know, a few months before he was assassinated, he actually signed an executive order that would have dismantled the Federal Reserve, you know, uh, printing uh, treasury notes that were backed by silver instead of uh, the Federal Reserve. And there's some people that believe that that might have been the reason why he was assassinated. But it's it's interesting. But however, you know, today the the, the Democrat Party is just flown off the rails. I mean, it's it's crazy what's going on. And, you know, I just can't see how they can win in November. I mean, knock on wood, but but there's a lot of Americans and even um, Democrats that at this point would not vote for for Joe Biden uh, or the Democrats that are coming in or the House and the Senate. So, yeah, Biden, we got another two years for that, two and a half years. But, the, you know, coming November. You know, I just, I think it's going to be a bloodbath. What do well, you think? I, I, you know how I joke uh, with you about how uh, Joe Biden is in, in at least this regard, he is a blessing to the, to the country because he's really shown that the Democrats don't have anything else going for them. They had uh, a couple of charming presidents who could charm their, weasel their ways out of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but Joe Biden has zero charm. And so he's got nothing to really offer uh, Andrew Clavin often says that uh, Republican presidents fail because they don't deliver on what they promise they're going to deliver. Mm -hmm. And Democrats fail because they do deliver on what they say they're going to do. <laughs> and man, it has well, been a disaster. Yeah, I heard today that that Biden was going to try to uh, forgive uh, the college debt. He wanted to, to push something through. And Pelosi said, nope, it isn't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, no. When so here he is trying to follow through on one of his promises. I mean, one of his promises, a big one. And now why would Pelosi say it's not going to happen? Because she knows it would, like, ruin all chances of her keeping her job in November. Well, it's, it's just suicide for everybody it's right suicide. now. Yeah, suicide. Yeah, there's nothing. They're just words. They're just throwing out words right now, but. Yeah. So I hear you got uh, you had a couple of big interviews this week, and you texted me just today. It was a surprise. You got on 
and did an interview randomly. I didn't even know this was going to happen today, but uh, well, I found out this morning that uh, Steve Bannon on the war room wanted to interview me and he's interviewed me before, but uh, so I got on about two hours ago. It wasn't that long ago. And um, first, right off the bat, he asked me about this article that was written about me in Politico. I don't know if you've heard of Politico. They're a news magazine that's uh, pretty well known. And uh, they're kind of, they lean to the left. And so when the, the, when the reporter asked if he could interview me, I was a little reluctant. He actually wanted to fly out to Utah and come to my studio and do a full profile interview. And I was like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> because, you know, these guys usually are pretty snarky. Yep. And so I was nervous when this article came out because I was thinking, oh, man, it's just going to be another circus show. They're just going to make fun of everything I do. But I felt like I needed to do the interview anyway. And it actually turned out to be pretty, pretty fair. You know, you could tell they're coming from that angle from the left. But I thought it was a pretty good article. And so did Steve Bannon. He was like, man, that, that was great. You know, I thought it was good. And, and uh, there was something in the article that I don't think was exactly accurate. It's right at the very beginning. Let's see. If you go down, it says uh, about the third or fourth paragraph down. It says John McNaughton. No, it's above that. I'll just read it. Go up, 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 way up to the top. John McNaughton is perhaps. Oh, yeah. right. John McNaughton is perhaps the most divisive political artist alive. So I don't quite agree with that because I am the most divisive <laughs> political artist alive. <laughs> That's not, oh, yeah. there's, no, there's no question about that. Well, I can't even think of another, what, political, political artist. I mean, who, who is that? Who's your competition? Banksy. Have you heard of that guy? He does oh, uh, street art. You. Yeah, but that's is that political? That's like that's like worldwide. Well, his stuff is political, but it's not divisive in that the people on the right really could care less, you know. Yeah. Mine for some reason mine really upsets the left. So I'm mm -hmm. a political artist that is appreciated by conservatives and absolutely hated by the left. I mean, they hate my guts. They write news articles about me all the time and I mean, my stuff shows up in newspapers and magazines in Europe and Middle East and all over the place. And, you know, Banksy gets nothing but love <laughs> because it's, his stuff's kind of interesting. It's, and I, I like what he does. I don't agree with a lot of the things that he, he tries to, you know, present and promote because he is, he is a, a leftist. But, you know, he's a political artist. But I'm I'm very divisive, and uh, it's not that I ever I wanted to be the most divisive. It's not that that was ever my goal. It just is because I guess uh, being a conservative these days makes you makes you the enemy of the left. You know. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. Let's see what else did they say that was okay. Okay, so then he says right below my picture. Asked how fame has changed his life as a painter. He was succinct <laughs> in his reply. I just sell a lot more artwork. <laughs> so when he was interviewing me, he, uh, it was funny. He was kind of trying to ask me these leading questions, you know, like, would you ever paint a picture that you didn't really believe in, but you thought was going to sell really good? And I'm like, uh, no, <laughs> yep. no. In fact, I do paintings that I don't think I'm going to sell at all just because yep. they're important to me. And I told him about this Hillary Clinton painting I did. I didn't sell any of it. And that's when I shared with him, you know, really, you guys, at some point, look up the John McNaughton political article and just read the whole thing. It's kind of interesting. But uh, yeah, so he says, uh, you know, I just sell a lot more artwork. You know, the fact is that that I'm still busy as much as I was since Trump left office. You know, I didn't start painting these things when Trump became president. I mean, I was I actually started doing political artwork uh, back in 2009 
um, when Obama was president. So I did pictures throughout his entire presidency and I did them throughout uh, President Trump's term of office. And now I'm doing them as Biden's in, as Biden's in president, the president. And I'll just keep doing it, you know, and I don't just paint the president. I paint things that I think are meaningful. You know, I did that that picture just recently called Freedom Rising that's on my website that has the eagle uh, coming up out of the ashes carrying the Constitution because that that has meaning to me. So so anyway, uh, Bannon was just asking me about this article and and then he's like, you know, you're kind of like that artist from the colonial days, Benjamin West. Oh, Benjamin West. Benjamin colonial. West. And yeah, okay. I, when he said that, I was like, oh, well, thank you. Uh, yeah, Benjamin West. And I'm thinking to myself, who's Benjamin West? So I had to look him up afterwards. And uh, he was a, he's actually a famous painter during the Revolutionary era, era that did a lot of modern day people in historical settings one of the first ones to do that he, he painted pictures of uh, benjamin franklin and such so so that was pretty cool that I'm guy looking him up right now benjamin west yeah benjamin west i believe he's the same artist he um i'm double checking this right now but um david mccullough the art the author who wrote 1776 and john adams he uh -huh. shares the story about a about an artist a famous uh, artist from the colonial era who rode into George Washington's camp. Mm -hmm. I believe it is Benjamin West. And, and the artist is looking at all of these men and how haggard and sickly and how literally they had no clothes. You know, they were, they were just wrapped in blankets and right, were, right. super bloody. And he said the artist was in that camp and he was looking at a person. This is a true story. It is crazy. But he was looking at a person and he said – this was the most disgusting and haggard man he had ever seen in his life. And he was looking at him and looking at him and he looked at him and, and as he looked at him closely, he realized that the man was his own brother. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's so an interesting story. I've never heard that. Yeah. He went up and helped him and they both opened up, a, uh, after the war was over, they opened up a shop, a shop together and he, that's, he sold his art from there. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's, that's, that's true story. Cool. You know, I wonder, you know, years from now, the stories that will be told about the people that survived this era, you know, the the um, the Tea Party people, the the Trump supporters, you know, the people that all got kicked off of Twitter. <laughs> you know, I mean, the crazy stories that we're going to tell, um, yeah. you know, we can't we didn't have to rough it out in many ways like the the original, you know, colonial fighters of the Revolutionary War. You know, it's interesting that only 10 or 15 percent of Americans even had anything to do with that war in terms of being engaged in it. I was surprised when I heard that. But it's probably not that much different than today. You know, how many people are actually involved politically in one way or another with what's going on in the country? You know, how many speak their mind and and really, you know, have have a, some skin in the game, you know, that really care about what's happening versus just letting things just happen you know right. it's it's interesting we live in a crazy time now you got a comment here from and and forgive me esua esua calloway it says love your artwork oh, love your work thanks esua i appreciate that you got it. yeah if any of you want to uh leave a comment you know feel free thanks daniel um or a question i'll be happy to answer any questions that you have oh, we got a question here from kenny <laughs> no, but I have painted him holding crayons. <laughs> have you really? painted him with in crayon. <laughs> I use acrylics. You've painted so, him holding ice cream cones too. Yeah, I've, paint, I've done some crazy stuff. You know, I just whatever on the painting I'm working on right now is going to be is going to be hilarious. I can't wait. You know, a lot of my paintings they have these kind of outrageous, humorous, you know situations but then they're uh really funny or but they have real serious undertones yeah. so you look at the picture and the first thing you do is you kind of chuckle but then when you think about it it's really quite serious and and uh, that's a nice way to communicate it gets people's attention and then smacks them over the head with the truth <laughs> that's what i try to do yeah. um 
So I was also thinking today, you know, speaking of uh, Biden with crayons, um, <laughs> you know, what's going on with Twitter is making my head explode. <laughs> you know, they, they uh, erased me about a year ago. They just took my account down. They suspended me. Didn't give me any reason. It's just gone. You know, I have like some around 60,000 followers and that's not a ton of followers, but I mean, that was a way for me to kind of present, get my new paintings out there. You know, anytime I had a new painting, I'd just throw it out on Twitter and it'd go everywhere, but couldn't yeah, do that. That was like wildfire every time. It's like wildfire. And mm -hmm. probably part of the reason was the leftists hate my work so much. They just, it was like kicking the beehive, you know, I'd kick the beehive <laughs> real hard and, and the bees go everywhere. And, you know, it's, uh, that's what Twitter was for me. So they shut me down, but I'm trying to get back on Twitter now, now that they're, they're loosening up. We'll see how that goes. Um, and uh, I heard that Trump said that he would not go back to Twitter because it's boring. <laughs> I don't believe that, by the way. I don't either. <laughs> but I'm, my, I, my I think theory, he will go back eventually, maybe after the midterms. Yeah, that's my that's my theory. I feel like I feel like he and Elon did get along. They did. It was very clear that they were they got along. They understood each other as business people. Um, and even if you listen to there's an interview that Elon Musk does where he he admits that he admired Trump's ability to troll people on Twitter. And it's like he's the he's the he's heir of hair. <laughs> yeah, he learned. <laughs> he learned. Um, oh. And it's funny. It's funny because uh, I, I think they talked and I think he said, hey, just uh, don't get on just yet. I got to fix everything going on in Twitter and then jump on for fun, you know, in six months or something. Right. But I, I think he's going to jump back on. I think so too. I think it's hilarious the way all the Twitter people or the employees are freaking out. They're crying. And, <laughs> they're crying. I crying mean, crying. this is just too good to be true. It's like a perfect yeah. storm. Let's, you know, the pendulum is going the other direction. It's, uh, it's nice to see. So yeah. Frederick left me a message. He says he just had he just got two of my pictures that are shipping now. The Forgotten Man, Freedom Rising. Ah, I have several more already. Your talent is amazing. Thank you. And you know, I those are it. two of my favorite ones. Forgotten Man, which is the one you see up on the screen here. And Freedom Rising is the new one that just came out that is just really doing well. I did a, a limited edition of only 116 by 20 canvas prints, and I think it's almost sold out. So Which one? the Freedom Rising with the Eagle. Really? Wow. Yeah. So if anybody wants to get that, you got to hurry. Okay. Watson says, I was one of your Twitter followers. I also followed you on Facebook till I deleted the account. <laughs> yep. Some people are getting pretty sick of uh, Facebook too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, the thing about great. Facebook is they won't let me do any ads. I have no idea why. Well, I know why. They just won't <laughs> give me a reason. Yeah, well, we've talked about it. I I might be able to figure out a way around that, but yeah, it is it, it's a real thing. It is a very real thing. Remember, I've I've tried many times and I've yeah. got years of experience in this, and they have really uh twisted up uh your accounts. Yep, they do. So anyway. Um, I'm just glad anybody finds me here on YouTube, my little YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. Uh, keep up the great work. You inspire many. Thank you so much. You know, it's nice to be able to talk about my artwork. You know, I usually am just sitting here in my studio, just painting away and not thinking about it. Um, you know, I, uh, but, but, you know, to be able to get on Twitter or, or hear and talk about how I feel is, uh, it's a lot of, it's pretty cool. Hey, um, so I was thinking about what's going on with Twitter, and it reminded me of one of my paintings I did called The uh, Impeachment Mob. Throw okay. that up there if you would. So this is kind of like what the Twitter people have been to conservatives over the last five, six years. I mean, they've just run us out of town. You know, they've, they've, they've just put us on. They've tarred and feathered us and sent us running. And uh, it's we're kind of frustrated at this point. We saw what happened on January 6th. And, uh, you know, we're trying to – conservatives are trying to get it together. And we've got some good leadership out there. And 
And so now that uh, things are starting to turn around, I did this painting called The Spirit of 2024. That's the other one. Put that up here. Sure. Full okay. scale. Let's do. Let's start um, off with yeah. that one first. Yeah, then show it up close. So yeah. that painting is called The Spirit of 2024. And this is what is going to happen over the next two or three years. You're going to see uh, a revival of conservatism in America. You're going to see uh, Twitter going back uh, to, to more free speech, uh, people being able to say what they think. And of course, they're going to try to stop it. They're going to try, but they're not going to be able to. You're going to see us take the House and the Senate. You're going to see uh, just a lot of very upset leftists. And I'm excited to see how that's going to play out. And I've got some paintings planned. Woo! I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. So yeah, I'm just I'm just excited, you know, that it's good to see some positive things going on after so much negative and so much unfairness and lying and cheating. And, you know, it's it makes you mad. There's a lot of frustrated Americans right now. Oh, by the way, uh, John, you make an appearance in this painting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. So so if you notice, let me just tell people who's in the picture here. You see Candace Owens on the left. And I put her in there because she made that joke with, when she was interviewing President Trump that she'd be happy to be his vice president uh, if he d decides to run in 2024. And they both kind of laughed about it, although I think they're, she would make a good vice president. More than likely, if Trump runs and he gets the nomination, I could see DeSantis being given that opportunity. I don't know if he'd take it, but... Um, Anyway, so I put her in there, and then I've got Dinesh D'Souza. I really like Dinesh. He's a, he's a smart guy, and I just thought he would be a fun inclusion <laughs> in the painting. Um, and he actually gave me the idea of the painting I recently did called uh, um, Solitary Confinement. You can see that on my website. But like Seth, what you were just mentioning, I am in the painting. I painted myself right behind Dinesh. You see the soldier? See the beard? That's and me black. right there. <laughs> yep. And I'm actually holding up my paintbrush instead of a gun. If you look real close, you'll see that. So the power of the brush, mightier than the sword. We That's got how uh, I a comment here by um, Sasha. Ooh, what is the meaning of old burden on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if you guys can see. There's Biden on the ground. He's holding up his mask. Okay, that's his mask he's holding up. Now, in the original painting, you know, this is a, a, re, a redo of a famous painting called The Spirit of 1776. And in the original painting, there was a fallen soldier on the ground. So I thought it would be cool to have Biden on, you know, Sleepy Joe laying on the ground, holding up his mask. There's like nothing he can do to stop this uh, this movement, this march towards liberty. It's probably, it's and uh, what? I, I just have fun with it, you know. <laughs> Why couldn't I get rid of COVID? <laughs> stop. No. <laughs> what are no. you doing? Please. Uh, we got a comment you know thing. from Karen talking about Twitter. I think this is interesting. She says the EU is threatening to ban Twitter. Nothing is going to change. The leftists will commit heinous crimes to stop it. Well, for I, sure. I, I doubt, like, I, I've heard that too, that they're threatening that. But man, they're in such a weak position right now where they have war on their doorsteps. And I just think America is coming from a position of strength right now. We're coming back. Like, we really, you could feel the past two weeks. I mean, yeah. the conservative movement really has just had victory after victory after victory. And then with Twitter, I just don't think the EU is going to be able to do much. They could try, but why? I mean, what's the point of them trying? You well, know, even their own EU. citizens, you know, if they try to stop it, a lot of them will just get these, uh, what are those called? Those v, uh, VIP, VPNs? VPNs. Yeah. yeah. You can get a private network to make it look like you're coming in from a different Right. City, so they'll, different they'll find a way around it. You know, freedom of speech is so critical now more than ever. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if I was an artist in a place like Iran, 
or in the Middle East or even some European countries, they'd stop me. They wouldn't let me do it. I don't even know if I'd be able to do what I do if I lived in, in Great Britain right now. You know, I mean, the things that, that – or even Canada. I mean <laughs> – I mean, saw that one coming. I mean, there's, there. I've heard, I've read articles about artists in like Pakistan and Middle East who did something that offended the the mullahs or the leaders, and they had their fingers cut off or their hands are smashed. I mean, artists are, you know, you got to have freedom of speech to be an artist, and so I'm just grateful I live in this country. I can say however i feel and paint what i want you know these images are gonna really i hope resonate with a lot of people 100 years from now when they think about you know the conservatives in america that wanted liberty that's what we're all about that's awesome thanks kathy i i agree i'm praying it happens so anyway um one of the things I'm kind of changing subjects a little bit, going back to the Steve Bannon interview. He uh, was asking me about the NFTs. You know, I talk about the non-fungible token thing that I've done. I started those in January, and he was asking me about it. He's like, so why why did you do NFTs? And I told him because, you know, they're, they're a little more fun, a little more lighthearted, but they're historical because they represent how Americans feel about what's going on right now. And um, they're, they're different in that you're buying a digital image. And so, you know, I was telling them about, uh, you know, the Trump collection and the Biden collection. And, uh, you know, right now, till the end of the week, so some of you that watch this, you may end up missing it. But if you get it now, there's a 30% discount on all my NFTs on my website. And you have to use the coupon code War Room. So W A R R O O M, two R's, War Room. And you get 30% off. And so that's something that is more of an investment. It's more of a, you know, you own an original essentially, but it's a digital form. So show that. Uh, here's one of the NFTs. This is the uh, Biden it's one. Classic. Okay. So. So it looks like, yeah, that's the Biden one. So this is just one of many, you know. So you've got uh, two lovely ladies. Uh, you've got uh, Hillary and his wife Jill grabbing them, saying, "Come on, Joe." And uh, you got Washington DC ah, going down in flames, and <laughs> and uh, you know the thing, you know. That's, remember that quote from Joe Biden? Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's he was talking he was about to pull the Declaration of Independence, and he couldn't do it. Yeah, and so he cut it off. Said, "You know the thing." Anyway, they're just kind of fun. The Trump, the Trump ones are the most popular, but this is one that's uh, that's out there too. You go check those out, and don't forget if you're going to buy it, use the discount code War Room, get thirty percent off. And, so and all these people here, I'm sorry to say, but they look like crypt keepers. They look like what? Crypt keepers. You know, they just look like oh. just the people <laughs> in general. They look like they just came out of. The like crib, the you know? dawn of the dead. <laughs> I know, there's fire and apocalypse in the background. It's kind of cre it's kind of creepy. I know, oh. but uh, anyway, uh, let's go to the next thing. Let's uh, let's show you. I'm going to show you my sketch. I did this drawing today of JFK, and I actually filmed it, so you can watch me as I work on it. I like to do this each week when we do our uh, show, where you can actually see me you know, creating one of these sketches. Um, and these sketches, I put them up. They're from my sketchbook, and I make them available. I sell them on my website. They usually sell really fast. So if you want to get them, you have to be on my email list. And uh, you'll see when they come out. And they usually sell pretty fast. you got to be the first one. But this is the one I did of JFK today. And, uh, you know, I've done JFK a few times. Now, only a, maybe one other time is a sketch, but I've painted him a few times. And, uh, you know, he's a little more difficult to do than some of the other presidents. And the reason for that is he's got this interesting look about him. You know, if you, you got to, how do I explain this? If you don't get him right, 
he looks a little bit goofy. If you if you get him too right, he looks like he's a male model. He's somewhere in the middle between goofy and model. And if I get it just right, I, I got it. I think I did. I think that's true of all of us men, right? You just <laughs> yeah. Little... Well, I know it's true of me. You know, I'm kind of more <laughs> the male model. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. I... <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what painting you're looking at, right? Well, uh, you know. Okay, I'm going to share a secret with those who are watching this this show right now. When I uh, proposed to my wife and I had to do the, the wedding announcements, I actually did a, pa a painting of me and my, my, um, my fiancé. And um, when I showed it to my boss at the time, he was like, wow, that's amazing. I, you know, Tammy looks really, really good, but, but I didn't know she was going to marry Christopher Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really make it? I'm like, like, hey, man, I'm the artist. I can draw however I want. So, yeah, I, I don't think I got my luck quite right. <laughs> yeah, Superman, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, maybe I am Superman. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, uh, well yeah, the, question, so. the question is, you know, not, not what Superman we are, but the question is what happened to the Democrats? You're, you're drawing JFK. And uh, and he was, I mean, yeah, he was pretty moderate, and he was a patriot. And that quote of his, you know, asking what what you can do for your country—that's not the mentality of the Democrats right now. Not at all. That's where they really shifted their their core belief system. You know, I think I, I used to when I used to think of a Democrat, I thought I used to think of somebody, a party person that was dedicated towards. Um, you know, blue, blue collar workers, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, the big businesses weren't, you know, screwing the little guy, you know, I mean, it was kind of a fine line between Republican and Democrat, you know, Demo you know, but it became a much wider gulf in time. Wouldn't you say that Seth is just it got more wide in the difference? Yeah, you know, um, I, I do believe Democrats thought that the demographics were changing. <clears throat> they thought, you know, that America was just going to be this, not a melting pot of people that, you know, coming together, but like completely diverse. And so they were trying to build that Obama coalition that mm -hmm. Obama won on in 2008. They wanted to keep that going. But the only way they could keep that going is if they kept targeting different groups you know like they're gonna right. say latinos or latinx how they say it you mm -hmm. know or african americans or women like they, it was always very a divided approach <laughs> and and they thought that coalition was going to be the coalition to win you know but it's mm -hmm. not the the american idea is the idea that wins where it's we're all united we're all in this yep. together this is our country we all look out for each other but right. democrats just dropped that just dropped it completely dropped it you know, it used to be that it was, you know, it was a con the country's purpose was to create equality. I mean, that was the whole idea of the civil rights movement, you know, equality. Equality but now under that's, the law. Yeah, under the law. But now it's changed into, um, a, it's about equity, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not even equity. It's like, it's like choosing which minorities are given preferential treatment. You know, it's completely shifted. You know, like I heard, uh, I was listening to The View or a, a snippet of The View. I don't watch The View, but sometimes <laughs> they say outrageous. Watching it while he's painting. Sometimes they say these outrageous things. And uh, Sunny Holston was, they were asking her about Twitter. And, and she said, you know, it's now going to turn into one of those places that's for, and then she kind of goes, white, straight men, you know, like they're, I mean, she, I mean, if she had said something like that regarding, you know, like gay Latinos, you know, pff, you know, everybody would be like, oh, that's just the most horrible you thing. That? Yeah. You know, to, to single out white straight men like we're evil or something, you know, it's just so bizarre. Um, you know, I've tried over the years to understand the mentality of the leftists and liberals because liberalism used to mean somebody who was a free thinker that, uh, 
you know, was willing to look at different options. And, you know, I like to think of myself as a liberal in that regard. But today, you know, leftists and liberals, you know, they kind of, and this is my take on it. I don't know what yours is, Seth, but my take is that they, they take a lot of pride in thinking of themselves as somebody who is, is interested in protecting the uh, the small minority, whoever that might be, at, at, at whatever cost, you know, if there's a, a group of people like, let's say it's the um, transgenders, then they're the ones that will fight to give the transgenders whatever they want. It's kind of, they, you know, I've heard people call it the bleeding heart mentality, you know, and I think it's important that everybody has equal rights, but when you trample someone else's rights for the sake of a particular minority group, then that that's a dangerous precedent. You know, um, that's how, that's kind of my take on it. Um, you know, in my sense, it's been, it's been um, the democratic view as of late or the very, what they would call liberal, but it's not liberal anymore, but um, is that they are God. You know, the state is God. And they're little saviors, and they're going to go out and save everybody mm -hmm. because they're in their view there is no there is no higher power than the state, right? And so that that flattens as a flattening effect where if there's no higher moral authority, then you are the moral authority, and then you have to go out and help people. You have to go out and make this utopia. You got to build the Tower of Babel here on Earth. You got to build heaven on Earth here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the Democrat Party has gone. And you can see, like, as they try to practice it and they got to, oh, they got to weed out all the people who don't think the right way. You know, it, it becomes in a very weird way when they try to build heaven on earth, they end up making hell on earth. And that's you see right. that in every single every single government, every single country that adopts this communist morality, the state is the most powerful entity. It just becomes absolute hell. And that's and that you're just seeing that there's there's a rejection of God, there's a rejection of objective moral truth, and they are the sole truth. They are saviors. They're going to go out and save everybody, but mm -hmm. you know it, it turns into hell on earth. You know, and and uh, so a place like Disney World is now turning into hell on earth. <laughs> it's, it's run by people that are woke leftists. You know, well, it used to be it used to be what do they used to call it? The most magical most, place. Uh, magical place on earth or something well it scares the can, heck out of me man. See, you can see the argument starting to form where it's very frightening because because this whole issue with the teachers right now where what's going on in the schools and 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 they're starting to position themselves to say well wait a minute we might be able to help these poor children and save them from these conservative homes where they teach them these things that aren't right we're going to help them we're going to lead them into a better future you know it's this very weird yeah philosophy we're going to help them understand their sexuality uh, <laughs> when they're in creepy. kindergarten first grade because their parents don't know what they're teaching them yeah you know, and creepy. the fact that disney would get behind something like that that is just blows my mind it's just yeah. unbelievable yeah so, well it's the spinelessness of their new leader i mean he he by all accounts the new leader is it's not um Ch Chapic, Chapic, mm -hmm. whatever his name is, he um, he's a conservative. Um, by all accounts that I've heard, he is relatively conservative, but he wouldn't stand up to his own people because he, wow. he the activists were so loud, and so he's drowning out the whole company because he won't stand up. Wow, that's pretty weak leadership. Yeah, that's why it's wow. important for all of us wherever we are to just stand up for what we believe in. Well. I, you know, I think that uh, the left is driving the country farther to the right just by their craziness is what's happening. Yeah. So, but anyway, I'm, I'm, you can see I'm working on uh, JFK here and uh, just kind of whittling away at the form and trying to get his, his features right. You know, he has some very interesting features. Uh, but the way I do this is I usually will go on the internet and find several different pictures of them you know in this case there was two or three i found and and i just sort of used that to put together the best likeness i could 
Um, and J JFK is interesting. You know, um, Jackie Kennedy didn't like a lot of the portraits of JFK. And I remember reading this. She she felt like a lot of them put dark circles under his eyes. And he did have dark circles under his eyes. He, he looked at a lot of the pictures. And that's the reason that the most famous JFK portrait that you see in the White House has him with his arms folded looking down. Oh, she picked that one? She picked that because she didn't like the the look of uh, of JFK's eyes always have that dark circle under him. So, you know, uh, presidential portraits, that's that's an interesting thing. Wow, yeah. Any I word on I'll have an opportunity someday to do a presidential portrait. Yeah, <laughs> do we know do you do they know does anybody has anybody said if if Trump's getting a presidential portrait done? Nope, he knows all about it, and he he may not do one until uh, after twenty twenty four, but sure. uh, but we'll see. There's a lot of artists I know that are, want to get that job. I'm one of them, <laughs> but I'm not really a, a portrait artist per se. I do kind of these scenes with lots of paint, lots of figures in them. So I would be a wild card if they chose me, but uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, we got uh, Frederick. He had wrote, he was looking for the show at 515 Pacific. He found it after six his time. What's our start time, mountain time? Please, I'll convert. It, oh. we, we intentionally started a little bit later today. Sorry. It, typically, it's going to be at 5, 515, 5 or 515 uh, mountain yeah. time. Yeah, usually 5, 515 mountain standard time. And today, yeah. uh, we just ended up doing it later. So we threw off a few of you. Sorry about that. Yeah, but five five o'clock, five fifteen uh, every Wednesday. Really, we're here. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. We'll try to be more predictable in the future. By know. the way, where where are all you guys? We got a, we got quite a few people watching right now. Where are you guys all watching from? I'll post them up. Uh, just tell us where you're watching from, and I'll yeah, that would up. be interesting to know where people are. I I would guess they're all across the country. Yeah, you know, I was one day I was looking on my Instagram. My Instagram's really taken off recently. It's up to about 45,000. But I was looking at the percentages on the countries, and about 15% of the people that follow me on Instagram are from Iran. I get these comments from people in Iran, and they're like, oh, keep it up. We love Trump. And I'm like, what? You know, I, I think there's a real strong patriot movement in, in Iran that would love to do away with their government for some reason they like my paintings so i thought that was interesting oh wow look at all these wow missouri alabama florida oh, oklahoma arizona wyoming salt lake city that's not too far away ohio whoo that's awesome man Got lots i of love it i'm um, thanks for joining us tonight you know this has been a lot of fun you know, JFK, he's, he was fun to draw today. And, uh, you know, I haven't done a picture of him for quite a while, at least in a drawing. Rhode Island, sweet. Illinois. Illinois. Man, good ones here. Man, you guys are awesome. Thanks for Pennsylvania. Hurricane Utah. Is that Hurricane well, Utah? It's not hurricane. pronounced hurricane. It's hurricane. hurricane. It's Hurricane. Hurricane Utah, right near Zion's National Park. One of my favorite. I made the mistake Michigan. once of, of pronouncing Illinois with an S. At Illinois. The end. Oof. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do no, that. That's it's, not like, it's like when uh, it's like when uh, Michelle Obama said Nevada. Nevada. <laughs> that hurts. That hurts. That's hilarious. But uh yeah, this is really cool. So I'm getting ready to. You can't really see. I'm putting in the bottom here, so I'm not too good at filming these. I'm sketching in the bottom of his jacket. These go pretty quick. This this drawing was painted at uh, double time. So indigo, I sped bro. it up. I sped it up double time. Wait, What's look. That? Read Indigo's comment here. This is a good one. Uh, liberals are the grandchildren from the hippie error. 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 <laughs> I like that. Hey, man, you mean era or error? <laughs> Oh, yeah, don't, so don't they're the love child, man. <laughs> we, they're all love child, <laughs> you know. 
a lot of my art teachers were leftovers from the hippie era. I mean, <laughs> they hated me because I was like doing this more traditional approach. And they were like, man, you got to let it go. You got to express it. And I'm like, but that's not how I want to paint. And they're like, well, then you're not going to be a real painter. You're, you know, it was, it drove me crazy. I, I don't have any problem with people that do that. That's, you know, it's kind of like music, you know, some like rap, some like classical, some like country music. It's okay. But in art school, you do it this way or you, it's the highway. Hey, and, you want uh, to, you want to like me, even though I was on an art favorite. school. They actually gave me an art scholarship at to BYU. I was uh, this. There was two out of two thousand that got the scholarship, so it was like a really prestigious thing. Paid for all my schooling, um, but the first day there, they're like trying to twist me into some different kind of artist, and I am. Uh, I just, I just rebelled against it. <laughs> so here I am writing the quote. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. You've all heard that. So today, how would they say it today? How would the Democrats say it today? Oh, man. Ask what not what you can do for yourself. Ask what your government can do for you. No, no. Ask not what you can do for your country, but what your country can do for you. So. There you go. That's better. Because that's they they're all that? asking about themselves. What How did I get that so stuff? mixed up? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's what I'm here for, John. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. That's why I need help. Yeah. Um, let's see. I could not stand art teachers who wanted you to draw and paint like them. Yeah, that was frustrating. That was very frustrating. But uh, you know, I, I met some good. I made some good friends in art school, and there's some good people there, and. Um, you know, one of the things that Politico, you know, asked me uh, was about my experience at BYU. And, and uh, you know, so I mentioned that in the <laughs> in the article. Um, a lot of good people there, but uh, boy, it drove me crazy. Uh, I love your work. Your painting will always mark the, the time in history that the politicians rebelled against the American Constitution. Thank you. That's that Triple is the down. truth. That is absolutely the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I feel like I feel like my artwork is is uh, it's different than a photograph, and it's different than than writing about it because it, it it's really from my heart. You know, the artwork reflects, you know, in kind of a metaphorical way how I feel about everything that I'm that I'm painting. You know, if I paint Trump, you can tell how I feel about it when you when you see the painting. If I paint Biden, you can tell how I feel about it. If you if you see what I've done of Obama, and it'll always be that way. You know, um, I've been compared to Norman Rockwell. Now, Norman Rockwell is a fantastic artist from the '40s, '50s, '60s, '70s, and he captured that time in American history. It was a beautiful time. You know, it was. It was a very patriotic time. He even caught the tail end of the uh, civil rights movement. But I'm kind of that type of an artist for this generation. But it's funny, the left will often refer to me as the evil Norman Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm, I'm flattered. I really am. Um, there's just so many things going on in the country right now. So many paintings that I want to do. Uh, and I don't have enough time. But I do about six or seven paintings a year. And on this show, we talk about the paintings. We talk about the sketches, what's going on in the country. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you check the box. Uh, subscribe to our show so that you won't miss anything. And I appreciate you coming on tonight. Go to my website, johnmcnaughton.com, and check out the other paintings. And I hope you all have a great evening. And we will see you next Wednesday about, about 5.15 Mountain Standard Time. Until then, good night, everybody. <laughs>